Thank you everyone for coming back to my channel. This is Promoting Safety Engineering and uh, my name is Sean Toby. And yep, so this is the channel where we talk everything about safety engineering, process safety, safety and risk, loss prevention, and just engineering in general, um, engineering oil and gas, yeah, and safety stuff. Yeah, so thanks for coming back to the channel. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. And um, if you have any um, ideas or what you want to see, please feel free to drop a comment in the comment section. Thank you. So, um, you know, I, uh, last week I dropped a video on on bow ties so what's a bow tie that's the tie you wear for dinners right okay yeah i'm just joking so a bow tie is um a, a picturesque way of showing how a hazard um can be a can lead to a top event and then you have the preventive and mitigative barriers surrounding that hazard so how you can actually see how you can control a hazard in the picture form okay so without talking too much that if you want to have a more in-depth um, explanation of bow ties you have to go to the watch the video i did last week um, so i'll just give a brief overview on this so a bow tie is read kind of from left to right also yeah before going um for further a bow tie is best done with a team an experienced team that are all on the project with you so you have your safety engineer your process your your mechanical your your civil or structures so it's always good to be done as a team so that um, based on their experience they can give you the preventive barriers that are in place or that are being planned to put in place and then um, so it's good to do it with a team also so as regards software you can use PHA Pro or sorry um, Bowtie Pro or Bowtie XP there are lots of other Bowtie um, softwares but this Bowtie Pro Bowtie XP those are good enough and um, yeah so those um, that's some free advertisement there <laughs> but then you um, you can always just what ma really matters is what you have in the in the boxes not really what software you use it's just like saying a has up you can use pha works pha pro but really the most important thing you can use uh, excel or word most important thing is the contents okay so I'll give a brief overview here of what's um, so you have your threats here. The, w firstly, you start from your hazard, which is gotten from your hazard. At the end of your hazard, you're going to have some hazards which are going to be in the red zone on your risk assessment matrix. I also did a video on risk assessment matrices, matrix, and um, you can go look at that. So from the risk assessment matrix, when you do use it on your for your hazard, you would have some hazards that are in the red zone, which we call major accidents hazards or level five hazards. Those hazards, you need to apply the bow tie methodology on them to make sure that the risks are probably, uh, uh, the hazard is probably looked into to ensure that there are enough measures and safeguards to avoid, um, to avoid an accident. So, you get your hazard from your hazard, the red hazards, the level five hazards, you get them from your hazard report, and then you come up with a top event, like how could that hazard lead to something really, um, really dangerous. The top event is not yet the consequence. It's just the point where things have gotten out of control, but it's not yet a full blown out ex accident. If everything is, um, properly in place you might be you should be able to avoid an escalation or it get into a full-blown accident so that's why on the left you read it sort of this way you have your threats which means what could actually cause the top event to happen so let's say like we're, what we're going to be doing let me show you what we, this is the bow tie we're working on today so you it's going to be about loss of containment this is the hazard right hydrocarbon hydrocarbon is as a hazard because it's very flammable and uh what's the top event the top event is the loss of containment so you could have a loss of containment which 
could lead to an accident, a full-blown ac accident or like a fire, or it might just not get that bad, right, if you have the proper measures in place. But how do we get here? What could lead to a loss of containment? You have your threats like external corrosion, structural failure. So that's what this is about. You look at those threats and then you come up with preventive barriers. That's stuff that can stop um, measures, safeguards in place to make sure that you don't get to this point, to the, you don't get to the loss of containment. But so assuming we get to the loss of containment, how do we avoid it getting to become a really nasty accident, a bad consequence? Then you have your recovery barriers in place, right? Or your mitigative barriers to mitigate the top event from becoming a full blown out, blown out accident. So those are then, of course, you have your escalation factors. This deal with the barriers in case the uh, what could actually make the barriers ineffective protecting against the top, the, the consequence. This, uh, those are the escalation factors, or we could also call them degradation factors, which could degrade the barrier to a, to, to, to a position where they're no longer effective in protecting against the threat or protecting against the top event getting to a consequence. So without further ado, let's go into the bow tie. So what's uh, the hazard? This is a pretty generic, but it gives you a good idea of what to expect so what's the hazard this is gotten from your um, hazard the hazard here is hydrocarbon gas and uh, gas and crude and then what's um what's a top event hydrocarbon gas and crude the top event here is loss of containment so that means you have a spill or you have a gas leak that's the loss of containment so we now go to the threat side so what could actually cause a loss of containment and looking at that the first where we could we it's best you list out all the threats first and then you start looking at the barriers in place so you have your team with you you have a team of let's say five six um engineers with you and then you start throwing it out like okay so this is our top event that we've looked in that we're going to look into so what are the threats that could cause it? And then the team throws out the various things that could cause it, loss of containment, like overpressure, erosion, that's, okay, I mean large overpressure could lead to that. Then you also have internal corrosion, which could lead to a loss of containment. You have external corrosion, could lead to a loss of containment. You have structural failure, could lead to a loss of containment. You have physical impact, that could be from a dropped object or from a vehicle running into, that could also lead to a loss of containment. You have material fatigue from maybe vibrations, like around pumps or compressors, which could lead to a loss of containment and then you have sabotage that's someone actually going to the facility to cause some problems like breaking a pipe or leaving the valve open deliberately to cause a leak or a spill and that is also a loss of containment so this are all everything in blue they're all the threats that could lead to a loss of containment it could be you could have 50 of them it could be really exhaustive, but you want them to be credible. You don't want to be bringing up stuff like um, bringing up stuff that's not credible, that would not really add much to um, to the workshop. So you have your the first we looked at, uh, we talked about is overpressure. So that's a threat. Definitely on a hydrocarbon processing facility where you have pumps and compressors, which increase pressure you could have overpressurization. And so what are the protections against overpressurization? The first, um, so you ask the team overpressurization. What are the what are the barriers that we have in place to stop that? Or what are the barriers that we plan on having in place? So you look at vessel designed to withstand the maximum allowable operating pressure. So that means the vessel or the pumps or the compressor or the pipings are fully rated to withstand whatever amount of pressure could come from the pumps or from the well or from the compressor. So that's some protection. That means it's fully rated, your equipment. Then you have your frontline maintenance to avoid 
to make sure that's just ensuring that everything is properly maintained. You have your regulatory maintenance, your statutory maintenance, your frontline maintenance, your there's a lot of maintenances. <laughs> and then you, so all those you have them to make sure that you don't have a pressurization. Then also you you should have your high pressure shutdown alarm or your switch to shut down in case of a high pressure. So maybe you want to shut down the unit or shut down the inlets to um, reduce the pressure in the or you could also do some relief like you have a PSV which would relieve to a flare. Those are all protections against overpressurization. So all those protections are here. Then these are escalation factors which could make this protections that um, ineffective so for frontline maintenance the non-performance of frontline maintenance this should actually be here so you don't do your frontline maintenance which could so you should develop a plan which could become a barrier also then also pressure relief system you have all this as escalation factors or degradation factors which could make this pressure relief system ineffective so um, you have your wrong set point so let's say you have a psv set at 16 bar whereas the design pressure is 14 bar of course you know that this psv is not going to pop even when you're getting to the overpressurization point so you need to think of that um, make sure you have the correct methodology for setting for developing set points non-performance of frontline maintenance just like we talked about you don't maintain your psvs you don't do your statutory maintenance maybe you want maybe look into them every two years or every five years to make sure that they're they're properly sitting and then also relieve valves overdue for change that could also be it could make this ineffective if it, they're due for change and you don't change them so those are um, escalation factors for this Prius. Then let's go to the next thread. Erosion, that's internal corrosion. So what could, um, that could also lead to a loss of containment. So you have the, in the internals of the piping and the vessels, the pumps corroding. So what could actually cause this? Ke uh, what could prevent this from happening? Chemical injection. So you maybe a uh, corrosion in inhibitor is injected regularly you have your corrosion inhibition system to avoid um, internal corrosion you have your material selection and corrosion allowance which means in your design phase and your construction phase you select the right materials and you make sure that you leave enough uh, allowance for corrosion and also you have your corrosion inspection and monitoring you want to constantly make sure that you're checking maybe with your pigging system or with whatever system you have in place to make sure that to check the the level of corrosion so that you don't have a loss of containment so what could make this barriers ineffective for material selection and corrosion allowance change in fluid composition this could be very dangerous because let's say you know you want to have this level of um the, uh, the, just this hydrocarbon or it's sweet hydrocarbon and then you start having soil hydrocarbons you start having hydrates that could make the internals of the vessel or the piping corrode much faster so you need to regularly check the composition of whatever's coming out of your well or whatever you're processing so that it doesn't quickly corrode your equipment then corrosion inspection uh, unavailability of inspection and monitoring plan you need to make sure there's a plan to constantly regularly check this like maybe every week every two weeks you're checking to make sure that it's not um, being over corroded right then this is another threat the blues are the threats remember external corrosion that's corrosion from the outside which could lead to a top event loss of containment you have your material selection you make sure you select the right materials to for your pipings for your vessels for your pumps for whatever you have the protective coating painting which means the external of let's say the piping should be have some protective coating like paints this is necessary because you might even be underwater right you might be like a thousand meters on the water and you have the pipes running from an uh, from a well deep in the deep in the ocean you need to make sure that they're properly you have good protective coating or else 
you would just have um it would just be corroded in no time right so and uh, this is a degradation factor degrading protective coating so yeah just as i said if you're underwater um thousands of meters underwater you want to make sure that or hundreds of meters underwater that you're checking regularly maybe with your rovs or you have a system in place to make sure that the protective coating is intact so that you don't have a corrosion we could lead to loss of containment also you need some sort of corrosion inspection and monitoring like we said earlier on what's another threat structural failure so supporting structured design structures designed to withstand basic loads so you need to make sure that um, the civil structural team uh, they this is their part they need to make sure that the whatever um, structures you have there can be fully supported uh, or whatever structures you build there's some sort of structure or the, the design can withstand whatever it's carrying like your vessels your pumps your pipings you want to make sure that the structures they're resting on are good enough to support them uh you need your structural intake so this just means that they've be des been designed and constructed and tested okay have they been designed properly to the standard and um, then also you have your structural integrity you need to run your structural integrity tests and then your structural inspection you constantly need inspection just like i said earlier on so you need to develop a structural integrity plan to constantly check it then also we have physical impact physical impact can lead to a loss of containment like a dropped object let's say you're carrying or you use a crane to carry something like a pump and it falls on the piping it could lead to that physical impact and it could lead to a loss of containment or you have a vehicle come into the place and uh, run into a pipe right and that could also lead to a loss of containment so what are the barriers in place you need access control to make sure not just anyone can walk in or drive into the facility some sort of perimeter fencing also you need effective supervision which means every in all the like when you're doing um lifting stuff you want to make sure there's proper supervision or safe systems of work like your permit to work system your lifting procedures you need to make sure that they're all good to make sure to avoid um like a dropped object scenario right your lifting procedures will help you with that so that maybe you don't move over you don't carry any heavy equipment over live equipment so that's very um that's really important to have in place so to avoid physical impact because that happens and then you have your loss of containment so those need to be in place um also um, material fatigue material fatigue just means that the some wear wear and tear over a long period of time so material equipment designed to withstand fatigue loads so vibration inspection and monitoring this is very necessary you know when you have um, compressors pumps there's lots of moving parts and lots of vibration and it could lead to um some damage to to um to equipment to piping and which go to the feedings which could lead to a loss of containment so you want to make sure that um, you have some sort of vibration inspection and monitoring and you do a, develop a plan so that this barrier is still effect is effective then you can have good old sabotage someone walking into the facility it could be even a staff that's not happy with the company and want to sabotage right so it could just be someone um damaging some of the equipment or leaving maybe a valve deliberately leaving it open and so you have some spill or you have some gas leaks right and so you need some good surveillance that's very necessary your cctv you need supervisors around you need effective security management which means access control which means you have some guards patrolling if necessary and then also community relations this is very necessary because wherever your facility is situated you may have people the people in that community may not be happy with it they may say it's causing pollution they may say whatever they're not happy with it so you have to make sure you have good relations with them or else they could try to sabotage your 
your equipment right and lead to a loss of containment like you might have pipes going underground uh, around the facility around the community and they may be able to trace them trace those pipes and damage them so which could lead to a loss of containment so you want to make sure that you have good working relationship with the community then you could also have maloperation so let's say you the staff are not well trained and then they maloperate or they leave something open which should be closed or something closed which should be open that could lead to a loss of containment so you could, should have effective supervision and then uh, you should also have your standard operating procedures everything should have a procedure on such facilities so that so and um, what could actually make these barriers ineffective could be incompetence they're not well trained so no matter how the good your supervision is or your procedures are if the staff is not well trained it could lead it could still mess things up right because they may not even follow the procedures we have that happening then also vacuum could lead to a loss of containment so that could be caused by some implosion yep you could have um, a vessel being empty and it implodes it's crashes in on itself so make sure your vessel so the, the protection against that they're designed and rated to withstand suction pressure from pumps and uh, also low level shutdown alarm also you could have um, some PSVS or um, yeah pressure vacuum safety valves uh, PVSV pressure vacuum safety valves so that could also be another protection against vacuums and also uh, so that's all on the threat side all this we could have a lot more escalation factors because we could say this is not well maintained or we could say the, the vessel was not designed to withstand or that there was some errors in the design process so so you could really go really far with this so you want to make sure that with the escalation factors you want to make sure that they're credible so that's why it's good to have a team because they can outrightly tell you that maybe everyone's properly trained or maybe um we've done our design it's top notch it's state of the art so we cannot have so it's something we've already looked into so we cannot you cannot say um the vessel was not designed properly right to for against vacuums because they know it's been done they're part of the team that worked on it so it's good to have a team because a, a team that knows a lot about the facility because you might just be writing a lot of stuff that they already looked into and they're already taken care of you know you want to actually capture what matters not just um repetition of stuff then um, so we finished with the left hand side which are the threats and the preventive barriers so now we go to the part where we say th you've had your loss of containment the hazard is out the cat is out of the bag right so what are you going to do to mitigate it from becoming a fire or a fatality or environmental pollution so the, so you have to look into that so um right now uh also don't i just want to drop this in here don't forget to subscribe to the channel and also um like the video or like my videos thanks very much and if you have any questions or suggestions please send them i'll get around to answering them i'm still going to work on the pnids that you want to learn how to read i'm still going to work on um, the fast i'm reading the comments it's just you know time right <laughs> and this is just good old me doing this okay so loss of containment so we're going to the right hand side of the bow tie which it means you already this has already happened you already have a loss of containment and so they go to the consequences so what are the consequences of a loss of containment of crew of hydrocarbons you ask your team and they will tell you the worst case scenarios are fatalities injuries fire explosion damage to the asset right and then also environmental pollution due to unignited release either from a gas or from the liquid from the the hydrocarbon like uh, crude oil you have that spill so those are the 
consequences you could have from a loss of containment. So for the fire explosion, these are the mitigative barriers. Everything on the right hand side are mitigative. That means this protects against us getting to this really serious accident. This uh measures and barriers we put in place we call them preventive barriers or recovery barriers or mitigative barriers or safeguards to ensure that we don't get to this so the first is life-saving equipment this could be maybe your fire blanket or you or you it's on a or it could be your medivac or your your lifeboats or your life bars if you're offshore so those would could help out from help from leading to a uh, to a fatality this this could help out that's why it's called life-saving equipment also uh, you could have your first aid kit also that that comes under here then also you have your temporary refuge your muster point this is necessary on every facility offshore onshore anywhere you need your muster point where everyone could gather around and the, the muster point must be situated in a place that is really safe so you can have this where you have everyone gather around and you do a head count and then from there you know how you, um, what you're going to do next okay this is necessary to prevent you have getting to this stage then also everything is all necessary and some might be done or some might already be in the process of being carried out on that facility then you have your emergency response this is sort of like the holy grail you need this you need your emergency response system your emergency response plan just think so that this is what tells you who's gonna fight the fire who's gonna who's gonna talk to the press that something's happening who's going to sound the alarm who's going to talk to um the managers that this is happening who are the safety co coordinators it's a long document that explains what happens when things get out of control when there's an emergency you need this and you need to everyone should have a reasonable idea of what's in this document and you need to run drills on it so that no one is caught off guard also you have your visual inspection people going around and your shutdown systems you need those also to avoid so let's say there's a leak or loss of containment it, your shutdown systems would close on detection and you will close that unit or that facility shut down the facility to ensure that it doesn't get out of hand then also we have um, another barrier is passive protection passive fire protection explosion protection blast walls firewalls buildings situated at safe distances from the fire all this could be really important so some sort of fireproofing or blast proof walls where um you have really critical equipment or where you want to have people run into in case of a fire that's also necessary then you have your fire and gas detection system this is also really really necessary a lot of them are safety critical elements really safety critical so your fire and gas detection system this is your smoke detectors your gas detectors your flame detectors your alarm systems your max that's a uh, manual access call points all this uh, fall into the fire and gas detections this automatically detects when there's a fire or there's a leak and it um, rings uh, sets off the alarm and um, also could set off your firefighting system either your monitors or your fire suppression fm 200 or your or set of your um your or your sprinklers yeah we could say sprinklers or your deluge system you have this um so that's very necessary to fight the fires then also you should have your ignition control we should have done your hazardous area classification making sure you have the right equipment in the right zones the right wiring the right cabling the right um equipment lights everything you need them in the right zones so that they do not pose uh, become a hazard and cause ignition of whatever loss of containment happens right then also you could have helicopter facilities which help against um to protect against this in case um so this would help you evacuate everyone really quickly and say you are offshore so that you avoid the injuries fatalities and asset damage 
so those are barriers on this um, to protect against this you could put in more barriers um, you could also um, think of escalation factors each of them could have an escalation factor what if the emergency response is not um, it's not you don't run drills at them what if the master point is not big enough so you have to design it to be big enough what if you have 100 people on site whereas you just have 50 life wars or or you don't have enough first aid kits so all this there could be escalation factors but you don't want to overdo it you just want to make sure you catch the critical ones that could slip through the cracks because everyone thing could have an escalation factor. What if you don't design your fire and gas system well? So you just want to make sure that everything you're talking about is credible. That's why it's good to have a team of people who know um, everything about the facility. And yep, also we have the environmental pollution due to unignited release. This could be a lot of gas, flammable gas in the area, or it could be a spill. So how do you protect against this after you have a loss of containment, you have your emergency response. So this is what same thing I talked about here. Who does what? You have a spill. Who's going to handle um, the press? Who's going to handle everything that has to do with it? Who's going to call the firefighters? Who's going to make sure the area is cordoned off and flagged off as a potentially dangerous area, hazardous area? So you have your emergency response, you have your emergency cleanup of spills. So if there's a spill, but you have a team, you should have a team in place and the kit to handle the cleanup um, in case there's a spill so that it doesn't, it doesn't get ignited, right? Then of course you need your drain system, probably your closed drains to have every, to, to channel the, uh, the flammable fluid out of, um, to, to channel it into the closed drains to make sure that it's safe from where it could find a source of ignition. So those are, and also they could have escalation factors. What if you don't design your drain systems well? What if you don't, your emergency cleanup kit is finished because you used it the last time, right? So all those, um, so that's in one, in, in short, that's uh, it looking at this bow tie. So um, I have lots of other bow ties. If you want me to look into them, I could. You could um, look in. I could do inlet manifolds, land transportation, lightning discharge. I could look into all those uh, pressure vessels, security. We could have bow ties on security. Like they are all bow ties. So I could explain them if you want me to do that for you. So um, just drop a comment and please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel thank you very much everyone for watching i hope you learned a lot this is promoting safety engineering and my name is sean toby thank you very much for watching stay safe bye bye